don't don't uh, uh, start with what you have. Uh, even in photography, you know, it was always sort of like buy the equipment when a client demands that you need the equipment. You know, otherwise you're going to buy, you know, rent it until you actually need it. Um, and when you can, when you have the budget for it, add it on. Maybe some people are blessed with all the money in the world and they don't have to worry about that. But I think if you're on a budget and you're trying to figure out how to, you know, really um, grow your business, start small, start simple and leave room, leave room to, to go in different directions. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Match Slip Podcast. My name is Frank. I'm the host of the show. On today's episode, we're going to be talking with Lauren from 20 Sided Store out in Brooklyn. But before we get to that, I just wanted to let all of you listening know that the show is now available on YouTube. So if you're used to listening to the audio version, you can now listen on YouTube as well and watch the video. Um, so without any further ado, I'd like to welcome Lauren onto the program today. Lauren, how are you? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Welcome. Or I mean, well, yeah, welcome viewers <laughs> to <laughs> no, it's not my show, to Frank's show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to have you on, Lauren. So yeah, I know so you I know you own 20 sided store, but I know you're involved in many other things as well. But let's start like from the beginning. Let's first know a little bit about you and then we'll start to get a little bit more into the store. So what can you tell us about yourself? Oh my gosh, what do you want to know? Um, how far back do we want to go? No. <laughs> well, we could start um, with like we could like go into like your interest in gaming, how that all started to lead you up to opening yeah. the store. Sure. Yeah. So, um, gosh. Okay. So I, um, I own the store with my partner, Luis, and he's actually the one who was really, um, started off the idea of having a space to play games. He was running magic, the gathering tournaments. And at the time I was, in a what I thought was a DD &D campaign, but we were actually playing GURPS. I just didn't really, I wasn't really that involved in um in gaming other than I really was interested in storytelling. My background is in photography and I and art, and I've been I feel like storytelling my whole entire life. And so when we first opened the store, um you know, Luis was running Magic the Gathering and they have this organized play program for Dungeons and Dragons. And he was like, you play D&D, &D, sh you should run these other events. And I was like, all right, let's give it a go. And so that's kind of how we started running Dungeons and Dragons in the store. And then just slowly over the years, um, as we started, um, you know, having a retail store and a space where people I always thought of like the stores, like the gift shop to everything else that we're doing, you know, like 20 sided is so multifaceted as far as all of the things that we do and provide as a community center and, a and an event space. And, um, in my background and just like, you know, throwing parties and, you know, and kind of having more interactive, immersive theater type things, like with my film and photography background, it just was kind of like a very natural fit to segue into um, you know, the, like me starting to create, um, a whole universe called Mystic Aether. And we started off running our Dungeons and Dragons games in that setting. And I was never going to create my own system. That was not like part of it. I was like, there's a million other gaming systems out there that are really amazing. And we run all of them and I'm just going to create a setting so that we can, you know, have something that's unique. So if people come to 20 sided to, play these different role playing games with us, we can have a unique, um, unique world to immerse people into. And um, after spending like 13 years of trying to cultivate a gaming experience that is unique and different, we I realized that that's why all these game designers are creating their own system. So I, I really find I really believe that the role playing game system is there to help facilitate the type of experience that you want to have in your game. Like you can do that with all these other games, but, um, but when you have a system that is made for the thing you want to do, it just makes everything so much easier. And, um, and so, yeah, so I just started kind of carving out um, those areas for myself to continue to work on creative projects and be able to 
um, to do more of that in this space, especially now that, you know, the retail store, our staff is amazing and they can handle the day to day for the for the store. So it allows me a lot of space to work on some of these other creative projects. You know, I was going to say, because you have so many creative projects you're doing just from checking out your website and Mystic Ether, like you had mentioned, and we'll definitely delve into that as well. And I know you had referenced that you started off doing photography and video, that that was Mm -hmm. your background. Do you feel anything from that world helped lead you into the game store realm? Or do you feel like the two are just um, like mutually like exclusive from each other? That Yeah, I mean, I think that in general, if I just look at my life, I've always been a storyteller. And games and role-playing games are just sort of a new medium to tell stories, you know, but I've always been, I've always surrounded myself with different kind of indie communities, whether it's like the indie punk rock scene or, you know, things like that. So, um, so I think uh, it wasn't, it was never planned for me really to be involved in the store. Like when we opened it, I was just kind of going to help get things started. Um, But there was such a drought in New York City at the time when we opened there. We were I think we were the only game store within a 10 mile radius that was running events. The Brooklyn or the complete strategist at the time was not running events. Uh, Neutral Ground had, you know, kind of closed up five years prior to when we opened. And uh, King's Games is so far away in Brooklyn that, you know, it was just like almost like a completely different state, <laughs> you know? Um, and so, uh, so we really, you know, when we opened, people were, you know, lining up out the door and around the corner and like, you know, we needed, we needed to fill a space that had long been sort of not filled for, for quite a while. And so within like, you know, two or three months, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to stop taking clients, you know, cause already I was like, well, you know, I'll, my partner, we both thought this was just going to be like a club that we had, you know, in the evenings, but we were, we did find a retail, uh, a retail storefront to, to hold the, to host the events. And so, um, and so just very quickly, we just started expanding the retail, especially as we realized that, you know, there was just such a demand and we were really good at it. You know, my, my background um, in entrepreneurship comes from my whole family's in the restaurant business and in cafes. And so when we opened up the store, I thought, well, how different can it really be from a coffee shop? You know, you're still community building and it's like, it's all the same. It's all the same. The only thing different is instead of food and perishables, we have games, but it's all about bringing people together around a table to share stories, you know? Um, And I think that overall, that's kind of what I think about when I think about the overall bigger brand of 20 sided, even if it's like, you know, a Magic the Gathering event or now the Star Wars Unlimited events or whether we're doing mini painting or writing workshops or all of these other things. Really, it's about bringing people together and sharing um, kind of what we do and how we do it with each other. So, and you know, what's interesting. I'm quite shocked too to hear that in the Brooklyn area that the other stores in the area weren't holding events is, and, and you mentioned the demand is there for it. So yeah. I, I'm curious, like, have all of those, have, have you noticed an influx of players now because you're one of the, I guess, the few offering that? Well, two years, we're, we've been in business for 13 years now. So after we, after we, we were open for two years and then all of a sudden there was like an explosion of, you know, places open. They saw what we were doing and everybody wanted, everybody's like, oh, we can do this too. Um, or we want to do it a little bit differently. So um, uh, I would say we're still probably us and the, you know, some, uh, one other place might be the only like don't quote me on this but we're I think there's still very few game stores in New York there are a lot of game cafes um or like bars that have games or gaming events now so I think now there's a lot of places to play but um but I think we're still one of the only places that are um like dedicated to uh selling games so um, you know, we, so we, we do, we still do, you know, we do events and we do the retail, but, um, but I think, uh, you know, our, our main business is, is on, um, like the storefront is selling 
products. Um, so we sell a lot of indie stuff and a lot of um, local game designer stuff and things like that too. So um, New York is a is an interesting place, and I think the reason for that is because rent is really expensive here. You know, I go to gaming conventions with uh, store owners from all over the world, and um, it's really interesting because you know we talk about rent and cost of living and things like that. And, um, you know, you think about like, we've got, a, we've got a lot of people here in New York city, um, but we don't have a lot of space <laughs> and the space that we do have is very, very expensive. So I think when you have different businesses that open up in New York, um, they really specialize and kind of have to curate a collection of things or really focus on, on a specific thing um, within that space. So, um, you know, like we talk a lot about opening other locations to do different things um, and kind of have like one uh, location that would just be events and one location that would just be, you know, tarot cards and another place that would just be, you know, puzzles and, and things like that. Um, so those are some ideas that we have, you know, maybe down the line. Uh, to expand to 20 sided because, you know, you sort of get to a place where, OK, like, you know, in New York City, we've got, you know, I've got a lot of unique SKUs kind of packed into a really um, small amount of, of floor space. And how do you distribute that space between having room to host events and then also room to carry all the all the products that we want. So we do a lot of turnover of different of different products and we try to really feature different, we have themes of the month where we, um, it's like this month is our pride month and then next month is gonna be summer in the city. So we really try to curate a collection of games that fit our theme of the month and uh, we run events that fit our theme of the month. So we have an opportunity to do a lot of things, um, but we just don't have to do them all the time. <laughs> And you said you've been in business for 13 years. The store has been around. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this April, last April was our 13th anniversary. Oh, congrats. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And Luis was running tournaments, um, you know, as 20 sided, uh, several years prior to that as well. So, uh, but it's been 13 years since I've been involved in the business and since we've had a, a, a retail location. So. Oh, wow. That, that's yeah. impressive. Yeah. And so from that period of time to now, what would you say has been the biggest like lesson learned from, you know, somebody that may be thinking of opening a store themselves to like yeah. hear from your experience, what, what you've learned throughout the process? Yeah, well, I mean, I would say that my advice is the same, whether you're running a game store or you're running, you're opening any business that's open seven days a week to the public, um, which is, um, Start simple, start um, small and flexible, and you can always grow from there. You know, I think uh, I have a friend who had a, a video store back when, you know, people would rent, you know, VHS tapes. <laughs> I missed that before. so much. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, you know, he had, um, he was the one who actually first gave me, you know, or reminded me of this, of the advice, because he had one store that he, you know, opened up bare minimum, you know, and just kind of let the business grow as you sort of figure out your location and the type of customer base that you have and what people are interested in. Um, and then his second location, he's like, well, okay, now that I've been in business for, you know, a million years, I'm going to open up my second business, right? And he put all this money into it up front. And then it just didn't end up that location didn't end up having the same kind of clientele as the first location. Um, and so I think there's always, you know, I think honing in on what you want to do and, um, and, and trying not to, not to be everything to everyone, right? Like we, um, I've realized that people come to 20 sided because they value this, they, they value our opinions. They value the things that we've curated and the community that we've curated. So if I find that if there are things that my staff knows nothing about, or I know nothing about, those are usually the items that don't sell, <laughs> you know, yeah. but if somebody, um, but for whatever reason, you know, if there's like a game, you know, that I really like, and you know, it's just, it's just very natural and it's just very easy to talk about it. And then therefore just th through my excitement around a thing, then other people get really excited around a thing. And so when we first opened, 
you know, we kind of had like one of everything on the wall and we had a sign that said, you know, if you don't see something you're looking for, let us know and uh, we'll order it for you. And we placed orders every week. And that's kind of how we sort of curated our initial collection of games in the store, which was just a customer would come in and say, oh, do you have, you know, Agricola? And it's like, oh, no, but we'll order one for you and we'll order another one from the for the shelf, you know, and eventually, you know, we started to curate a collection of games that were around the, you know, the customers that were coming into the store. And, um, you know, and then the the Warhammer stuff and things like that. Like, I don't play war games. I love the miniature painting, but I wasn't a big war gamer. And we had a couple of that stuff on the shelves. Um, but we didn't, you know, we weren't really cultivating a lot of people from that community into our store. So, you know, about six months in, we just decided, okay, that's not our thing. And we, we know nothing about comics. So we we're like, we don't really have space for comics, you know, and our good friend Gabe owns Desert Island and he's got like the best comic shop in the neighborhood. So, you know, he's got comics covered, you know, so we'll focus on, you know, the role playing games and the collectible card games um, and the board games, because that's what we're excited about. And that's what we know about. And, and then kind of see when we make space for other things, then we can make space for, you know, adding things on and trying different things out. And over the years, we've, you know, we're doing more workshops, we're doing more classes and seminars. And, and that's kind of, you know, more in line, I think, with, um, with the things that, you know, I want to be, you know, providing to, to the community. So it just sort of is a natural progression um, and fl seems to flow really well. And um, so... So that's my advice. Don't don't uh, uh, start with what you have. Uh, even in photography, you know, it was always sort of like buy the equipment when a client demands that you need the equipment. You know, otherwise you're going to buy. You know, rent it until you actually need it. Um, and when you can, when you have the budget for it, add it on. Maybe some people are blessed with all the money in the world and they don't have to worry about that. But I think if you're on a budget and you're trying to figure out how to, you know, really. Um, grow your business, start small, start simple, and leave room, leave room to to go in different directions. It's, it's essentially preventing um, yourself from spreading yourself too thin, I would imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, two things, um, spreading yourself too thin, too thin, and then also just, um, just becoming like overwhelmed with, um, with, uh, you know, I, I, I was talking to my cousin too the other day and it was a really, you know, he's like, you know, talk about things that you know about, you know, and do things that you, that you know intimately. And, and I think if, you know, if you start your business starting there, then, um, then everything else will fall into place. So. That makes a lot of sense. What are the most popular games that you're seeing at the store. I know you mentioned you have offer role playing games and the tradable card games, and, yeah. and you stick to you know what you guys know best. So, what are some of those games that you're finding is most popular amongst the customer and player base? Yeah, I mean, you know, the trends change uh, year to year. You know, I would say, um, but you know, the things that just kind of fly off the shelf are games that have really great art and design. Um, we try to focus on a lot of smaller indie stuff. So we have a really large collection of like indie role-playing games that are like very art, art looking. Um, I wouldn't say that those are necessarily like our best selling titles. Um, you know, I think Catan and Codenames and now Wingspan and Root are probably our, our, you know, number, you know, kind of really, really popping up there. But if you, on our website, we do um, every year change our top 20 best selling uh, games and and role playing games, so that's always listed on our website. We do a whole thing in um, November where we have our community favorites and we kind of assess our best selling games of the year. And so those are the things that we really highlight every Christmas. So I'll be curious myself to see what twenty twenty four brings. I feel like after the pandemic, we've seen a lot of shifts and changes. In, and we also moved into a new location that's just uh, a block up from our old location, but the neighborhood has really changed a lot. So it'll be really curious to see um, if our top 20 games this year look very different than, you know, our top 20 games from last year or even the year before. So I mean, it's always, it's always a surprise to me too. <laughs> <laughs> How much square footage is the store that you're currently in? I would say our the retail is probably about like 
1200 square feet maybe 15 so okay. and we're probably and yeah and so like you know talking about like you know i'm, I'm at conventions with uh, other store owners who are you know they're like oh i've got such a small store it's only 3600 square feet and i'm just like wow like what i could do with like double the amount of space you know <laughs> you learn to work within those like confined parameters when you don't maybe have as a larger of a store as maybe you'd like to have absolutely yeah i am i th always say my superhero power is space you know i can i can fit a lot of stuff in a really small amount of space and make it look amazing so um i'm trying to slowly uh teach everything that i know to uh my staff and um and they're getting really good at the displays and you know it's it's really allowing me to kind of only have to come in like once a month to sort of do a big a big reset at our new monthly themes but they've really you know got it down and um it's great i love it how many employees do you have to like facilitate everything since you mentioned you're there once a month for the yeah. most part what yeah. um what we roles do people uh partake in yeah, so Luis and I are um, very involved owners. I am much more of the front-facing uh, person, so I handle all of the social aspects, uh, the marketing, um, the front-facing side of the the uh, website, which I want to redesign so badly right now, um, and. Um, and then uh, the events and operations, how people do things, how they flow in the space, the way people feel from the minute they come into the space. So I'm really, I'm really about curating an experience, um, and that's that's sort of my my overall duties um, and scheduling, lots of scheduling. <laughs> and then Luis is the our main buyer, so he. Um, you know, so I kind of, we, we communicate a lot about what are the, you know, what are the trends? What are the themes? What are the things we want to do? He lets me know kind of what's working, what's not working. Um, and he does a, a, the big bulk of our, the majority of our, our major ordering and is really, um, uh, also in charge of, uh, the collectible card games, uh, just because a lot of those events really are about making sure that we have the product to run those events. So. Um, so there's a lot, a lot that he kind of manages there as far to, as far as like the back end. and he's a programmer. So he, he does all of the kind of, um, back end inventory systems and all the things that nobody care. Nobody, nobody wants to, it's the not fun part of the job <laughs> for most of, uh, for most of us. Um, but Luis is great at it and it's his superhero power. So that's amazing. And then, uh, we fluctuate between a three and four full-time staff members. And then we get, we have a lot of indie local game designers uh, that will, that we have spotlight events with who will. Um, so the, the, our regular staff, they manage um, the, the store and they handle uh, customer interactions and selling. And uh, a couple people will run our regular events and then we'll bring in game designers and product partners to also run events at the store. So, and then Morgan uh, right now is is really kind of spearheading our Instagram. She's really excited about that, and she does a lot of the descriptions and stuff like that on our website. So, excellent. And you had mentioned you had you deal with the marketing side of things as well. Yeah. So I was curious, like, what kind of things you're doing to get the name out of the store and like to just draw more people in, whether it be in the New York area or to get yourself more nationally known from other states? Yeah. So, you know, right now, I mean, that's like really something that, um, you know, we've always just kind of been word of mouth marketing and really about, um, you know, kind of engaging with people um, in person and really making a connection with people. And, and that's kind of how we've always done it. Um, and this year, well, I've been actually working on the, like the past five years on sort of strategies for, um, you know, so of how we can kind of really expand that and, and get things going. And I think one of the biggest struggles with, you know, kind of thinking about, um, about all of that stuff, at least for me is really how to do something consistently. Like it's very easy to come up with an idea and have it happen once. And we've had a lot of those throughout the 13 years where, oh, this was a great idea and we do it and then we get busy and something falls off or 
we have new staff members come through and uh, maybe, you know, it was something very specialized that is very difficult for somebody else to pick up and learn. So I'm trying to really put systems in place where um, we can start to grow um, that, maybe start to think about, um, you know, what that might look like, because we do have an online store now and and we, we want to start selling our own products. And so um, we are thinking about, okay, where, what are some avenues to, um, to get the brand out there and to really reinforce the 20 sided methodology of how we do things here. And, um, and I, we've been thinking a lot about, um, just like different ways that we can, uh, utilize, um, some of the social market, social media stuff, but then also maybe starting to think about uh, partnering with different writers and, and like, and people like yourself, like getting on more um, podcasts and doing more interviews and really just talking more about what we do and why we do it, things like that. So, and then maybe eventually we'll, we'll start slowly generating a budget to maybe put ads uh, somewhere, but I don't even know if, um, if that's what people do anymore. <laughs> you know? So, but I really like kind of partnering with different people and cross promoting. So I'm working a lot with our retail partners and figuring out how we can cross promote because, you know, if we get a game designer in the store and have them do a demo, we'll sell, you know, so many more copies of their game because people want to meet the designer and they want to talk to them and they're there and they get it signed. And so, you know, kind of really, and then, you know, they're marketing it because they're going to be somewhere showing their thing off and we're going to market it because we're excited to have them as a guest spotlight in the store. So I'm really kind of working on that right now of really every Saturday having at least one spotlight event that we have upstairs that focuses on collectible card games or board games or other lifestyle products that we sell. And then having another um, event in our downstairs space, which is a little bit more of a theater space where we can do more, um, you know, kind of, you know, spotlight other kind of creative content creators. So whether they're podcasters or TTRPG, you know, adventure writers or, um, you know, there's so many areas, musicians, so many, so many different areas, I think now in this industry that are coming up of, of like all these things that kind of come together. And so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to always stay ahead of the curve and, uh, you know, think of really creative ways that we can expand this hobby and, and kind of get this industry to the next level. And, you know, with living in Brooklyn too, you know, you, you have a wide var variety of like musicians and artists and stuff like yeah. almost at your disposal to work with. Yes. So I work with, a. A DJ named uh, DJ Preschool. His name's Larry Weissman. He's amazing, and he uh, has been. I've known him for you know 24 years in the neighborhood. Um, you know, I used to go see him. You know, DJ dance clubs when I was like in my 20s. Um, and he's you know he's a, a brilliant man, and he uh, has written custom music for my LARP events or my, my murder mystery parties is what I call them. Um, and it's a three act structure. And so I have him come in and live, uh, perform the music so that we can really, um, facilitate the, the room. So if I need to bring up the tension or bring it down, it, it can really depend, right. These are interactive, immersive experiences. So you never know, um, kind of the direction the story might go. And so by having a live DJ to help with that is so, it's so incredible. Um, I'm really excited to get more of those events in the calendar. I've been doing a couple of them as private events this year, which has been really exciting. Um, but uh, we're trying to, like I said, we just moved into this new space. So I'm really trying to get this space, um, the upstairs of the space, is like our main floor, our main retail floor is perfect, um, but we're still renovating our downstairs space. We've been running role-playing games and the mini painting workshops down here, but um, I'm working with an electrician to kind of redo all of our lighting down here and and get some set pieces built down here so we can really do more of the, the mystery parties and, and get kind of ready for when it starts to get colder again and everybody wants to be inside again, so. <laughs> Do you feel with your creative background that that's opened up these opportunities for you to make connections with people that are in various uh, 
creative um, theater wise or music wise industries? Yeah, I mean, and as a photographer, I sh I photographed a lot of musicians uh, and artists, so you know, I already had a big um, connection with a lot of of musicians in Williamsburg, especially from like the early two thousands or early aughts, uh, whatever you want to say. Um, and so, um, so I just partnered with um, Kit Malone from TV on the Radio. To he's also he's a musician who's amazing, but he's also a um, a really makes really beautiful watercolor paintings. And so, and his work is very, um, folklore based and I'm working on this reverie deck for mystic aether, which is a tarot deck that's based on the astrology of the world. And so it was really amazing to get to sit down with Kip and just tell him stories of the world and have him illustrate, uh, all of the cards for the deck and it was the first time that I got to see all of the is like all these ideas and images of my world that were in my mind, like actually actualized in physical form. So that's that was a really incredible experience. And hopefully we'll have that deck out next year um, in the spring. And I think TV on the well, I don't know if I can talk about that. But anyway. <laughs> But anyway, you might be hearing more about uh, Kit Malone and TV on the radio soon. Um, but I'm really excited for the deck to be released and come out. And, and so some of those partnerships. So, yes, I have um, some opportunities there uh, just from, uh, you know, being in multiple industries and also, you know, having uh, being in, in different like being in the skate scene and being in the punk scene and being in the indie indie scene in general, I think there's a lot of crossover between indie game designers and indie artists and um, indie musicians and, and, you know, comic artists and, you know, all of these kind of things. So, um, you know, when you cultivate a community and you're welcoming to everyone, it just opens up doors. Um, and I don't think that I'm particularly unique in that way. I see this happening in a lot of other industries and uh, in other um, ways where people are you know, really uh, just open to new ideas and willing to make changes and to adapt and to explore and to grow. Um, so I think I, it's, it's really just, I think it's just when, when you have the desire to, to do that, uh, all of a sudden the opportunities just kind of present themselves. So. We're going to take a quick break from this podcast to talk about our sponsor, Cardboard Shuffle. Cardboard Shuffle was our 10th podcast interview here at The Match Slip with store owner Mark. Mark has expanded his brand and has produced his own card sleeves called Shuffle Shields. Shuffle Shields come in packs of 100 premium matte card sleeves for standard size trading cards. They contain no PVC and are acid free. I have 17 packs of Shuffle Shields card sleeves to give away to listeners of the podcast and followers of The Match Slip on social media. Requests for a free pack of card sleeves shipped for free to you will be processed on a first-come, first-served basis. To receive your free pack of Shuffle Shields, you'll need to send a screenshot that you're following Cardboard Shuffle on Facebook to frank at thematchlip.com. Good luck, and back to the episode. And, you know, you mentioned Mystic Ether a little bit, and mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about that a little bit more. And because I saw also on your website that you've developed nine role-playing games as well. Yeah, I mean... Over the years, yeah, I think we've, you know, put like something out every year at some point. A lot of stuff is out of print. Um, but um, but yeah, right now I've got Salton Lake, which was originally created for a, um, a party with Jupiter Disco Bar. And um, it was sort of sponsored by uh, a whiskey company. And now I'm blanking on the name. I'm a terrible person. Um, but I'll, it'll be in the notes somewhere. We'll, we'll find it for you. Um, but that was a really fun project and yeah, they paid for me to write that adventure and publish that. So that was very cool. And then, uh, we did another one with wizards of the coast prior to that. It was, uh, Todd James, um, who's like also an amazing artist and Mishka t-shirts and dungeons and dragons was doing these like, um, you know, Todd James artwork on Mish, you know, you know, produced by, or, you know, screen printed by Mishka. And we did a pop-up shop in the back of 20 sided. And we were trying to think about what we wanted to do for the event. And this was before, 
Um, people were doing role playing games for live audiences. I think, you know, maybe Dungeons and Dragons might have been doing the stuff at PAX at that time, which is how I got the idea. And I, you know, so I sort of pitched the idea of like, well, what if we write and what if I write an adventure, Todd illustrates it, and we have Todd play, and then we can, you know, have all the people who come to the event, anybody who wants to be a player at the table can drop their name in a hat, we'll draw six people to come up and play in front of everybody else. And so, um, so that adventure got published. And that was sort of like a Christmas themed adventure. And it's called um, Smoke Mountain Lodge. And there's also like sort of a what I call a runner quest, which is a, another unique way of um, playing games, which um, I set up for taking games to bars. So uh, it's, it's almost like a gauntlet. But um, start at one end and you kind of work your way to the other. And so I have a few of these that um, I've written for for different events. And so if you get Smoke Mountain Lodge, you'll get the the runner quest, which is like the gift, gift makers workshop. And then you'll get the full like at the table adventure. Um, so that's one. We did another one with this other band called Chamber Band. That one's this one's out of print, but hopefully we'll reprint it again. Um, but Chamber Band was doing the record release party. And this one Jocko Farino wrote, um, and he wrote a, so the whole album, Chamber Band's album was all um, based on like different themes in Dungeons and Dragons. And so uh, each song, you know, we kind of, we kind of built an adventure around all the songs in the album. And then we had, um, I think there were like five band members. So we had five or six, five or six band members. So we had five or six tables and every one band member was at every table. We played uh, the game and anybody who signed up for it got a free copy of the module. And then afterwards we all walked up the street to the venue where they were playing their record release show. So that was a really cool event. Um, and so maybe we'll reprint that adventure. And then there were a couple adventures that we had written prior to that uh, for Halloween. So the Halloween one, actually, that one, there's two Halloween adventures. One is not in print anymore. One is in print. Um, also, both of those were written by Jocko Farino. Um, there's a couple adventures that I wrote with Richard Ruin um, for, from our Rook Studios um, that are also not in print anymore. So we'll, we'll have to get some of these back into print and write some new stuff. But yeah, there's... I might be forgetting some in there, but <laughs> there's a whole bunch. Would you say that with having all these projects you're involved in, because I know with Mystic Ether, with these uh, role-playing games, and even your science fiction, your fantasy world, yeah. Mira, I mean, how do you manage all of this? I mean, I know it's it's pretty yeah. much, I'm guessing, you have the ability to have the employees that you have in the store, and I'm guessing that's alleviating more time for you to focus on these other projects. Yeah. So we, um, the store is open from noon to seven. Uh, our events run late at night. Um, so my time is in the morning. So I wake up at 9 a.m. And, and I carve out from, you know, nine to noon as my time. So sometimes I take a day off and sometimes I carve out time to write and create. Um, and so those are my, those, that's my window. And, and, and I sort of, I think the pandemic really kind of gave me the opportunity to have a big jump start on Mystic Aether. We were running all of the, um, all of it, it started off as just the city of Black Bottom, and we were running that stuff for events at the store. So I was kind of pressured to write every week because, and we were writing week to week, you know, uh, it's like, okay, well, next Wednesday we've got another adventure, so we have to write it. And at the time, I was working with my staff of um, of game guides and writing all of these adventures week to week, but we were really writing them just in bullet points, just just enough so that we could run it. And then later, um, you know, now I'm going back and trying to get all of that stuff published. So, um, so a lot of it kind of starts with running it for an event in the store and then, you know, over time. So like Clearwater Peak is an adventure. Um, so I've been making these like little brochures that are sort of in-game props, really just to help facilitate um, me running these adventures in the store. Uh, but so I've got a lot of products that hopefully will be coming out this year. And one of them is 
um, you know, the Clearwater, a Clearwater Peak adventure and a Black Bottom adventure, a full Black Bottom map, the the rules to running in the 20 sided adventuring system, um, and then this Reverie deck. And so those are the kind of my my projects uh, for Mystic Aether that I am working on writing right now. And so um, it's kind of fun because on Friday nights I do this coalition meeting set in Mystic Aether. And, you know, every week I'm able to kind of, it's very improvisational and there's not a lot of stuff that's uh, scripted out. I kind of have my structure um, for how I run the events and because I know the world inside and out like it's all here in my head it's just a matter of getting it out getting it out right. on paper you know and really just i've got you know a few a few hours every day uh to do that and i think it's really just about that you know it's amazing what you can do i think the entire mystic aether universe came about because you know i forced <laughs> force i she wanted to do it but johnny medina who was a full-time employee at the time the pandemic hit and i needed to keep her employed and i said I want to work on this project. So we're going to do a two hour live stream once a week and we're just going to build the world. It was called world building Mira, which was the planet, you know, it was before we even came up with the name mystic aether and the two of us just, you know, in, you know, two hours every day for three years created an entire universe. You know, So, you know, you can do a lot if you just set aside a little bit of time every day, it doesn't, and I think that's one of the big things that I've learned. Uh, I've been taking a lot of writing courses recently and um, writing workshops because I'm trying to uh, run my own writing workshops. And I'm, I'm trying to see how other people are doing things who are not in the role playing game space. And almost all of them say, you know, carve out that, you know, 20 minutes a day, do those writing sprints, like, you know, keep those creative juices flowing. So um, I never thought of myself as being a professional writer, but it's becoming a thing. And, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm ready to help other people see their visions um, and start to create more courses and workshops around how we can do that as well. So, uh, but yeah, I think the starting point is just, you know, make it, a, I would say, I said, make it a ritual, make it habitual. <laughs> You know? Right. Yeah. Allocating a little bit of time each day to something definitely yeah. relieves any overwhelming feeling you might get if you're trying to cram everything all together. Yeah. Yeah. Because I find that if I can't if I can't keep doing it on a regular basis, then it's just not going to happen. And if I can't fit it into my everyday life, then it's not going to happen. You know, I might be able to do it once, but it won't become a thing. Um, right. And I think that that also really kind of comes down to you know, cutting out the things that are not, that I don't enjoy. Um, and so that I can make space for the things that I do enjoy. And that's been a lifelong process. You know, I'm not perfect at that and I'm still trying to get better. I actually just had a, a meeting with my partner the other day where we have so many, we've been meeting every month to discuss, you know, we, we meet every month to talk about um, where we want to push the business and where we want to move forward um, because we're life partners and business partners. You know, we try to not, you know, be talking about it all the time. So we have once a month where we get together and we really kind of hone it in. And and for this month, you know, we've been saying to each other, okay, well, instead of, we got so many things we're wanting to do and we're feeling really overwhelmed with trying to get them all done. So maybe this next meeting, we need to talk about what are we cutting? <laughs> what, are, what are we, what are we, what are we going to stop doing? Because something's got to give, <laughs> you know? Um, right. So in order, in order to keep pushing forward and pursuing these other things that we're clearly struggling to make time for, something's got to go. And so that's going to be our goal for, for this month is to think about, okay, what, what can we cut? You know, <laughs> what, 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 what isn't making it, you know? So. Are well, you still doing the conventions like you used to? Cause that, I mean, your I think your products alone and like the stuff that you're creating yeah. is a great marketing vessel for the store. Yeah. But yeah. What about I, the conventions? I'm very excited to get back into doing conventions. I've been trying to go to them and walk them, um, this year. Um, so, so far I've gone to almost all of the, the business to business ones, a couple of the, of the retailer focused ones. I'm, I'm not going to be going to Gen Con this year. Um, but, um, but I've been trying to get in as many as I can. And, um, again, it's just a great way to yeah reconnect with people, meet people face to face. Like we have a lot of retail partners that, um, we talk to every day or every week, 
um, over email or over the phone, but we didn't, you know, we, we don't really have an opportunity to meet them in person. So um, there's a gaming association convention called Gamma every year. And that one this year was really incredible. Um, it was just a really great way to put a lot of names with face, faces with names. And, um, and so I'm really hoping to do more of that. And, um, and then as we start to have these products release, I definitely want to have booths at conventions. In the past, we've run games at conventions. Um, and I've been doing a little bit of like, you know, kind of guest spotlighting if I can get in, you know, um, if I have some time and I can, I can run a table at Games on Demand. I'm always, you know, I, I love Games on Demand. I'm always excited to, uh, to participate in the programs that they've got going on at conventions. So hopefully I can carve out more time this year and next year to uh, definitely next year. I'm hoping to this year make a lot of the connections and kind of re reconnect with people. And then next year, really start scheduling stuff in and, and making room for it. So. I mean, you definitely have a lot of stuff going on, but like you said, it's, it's a hobby for you and that that's always makes it even more the worthwhile to continue doing what you're doing. And you have, I know, extensions of the 20 sided store brand. I know you have radio, you have video and you have the stories. Those yeah. again, seem like perfect marketing opportunities. What do you yeah. do with, the, with those um, three outlets these days? Yeah, well, so we just, so I was, um, we, we were live streaming on Twitch. I'm hoping to get some live streams back up and running. We just started a radio show with Newtown. Newtown Radio invited us on for a radio show. So I've got a show every other Thursday uh, on Newtown Radio. So that one's, that's really exciting. I don't know what we're doing with it yet. They gave it to me so quick. I didn't even have time to really come up with an idea for it. So Alex, uh, Alex Weeks and I, um, are just sort of building the programming kind of as we're as we're live. So the first uh, two radio shows have just been, um, you know, been us kind of talking about Twenty Sided and all the projects that we're working on. But I'm hoping to get into doing a little bit of live play. We actually had some random people outside the studio. We invited them in to build characters last week, so that was really fun. Um, and then. Um, I'm working on doing um, more video, like the workshops as more video content. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we've got, yeah, so many sides to 20 sided, right? So we've got, right. you know, the adventures that we're publishing, we've got the events that we're doing, we've got, um, yeah, the, so, so I don't know, we'll just keep, keep staying tuned. You know, I feel like, like I said, I've, I've done a lot of different things and um, right now coming out of the pandemic, it's just a matter of sort of you know, we kind of had it, we had, we were moving our store and we had, um, you know, we had kind of stopped running events in person because of, you know, we were forced to by the state. So I moved everything virtually and we were doing everything online for about two or three years. And then when we kind of switched gears to going back into person, I kind of, you know, got really overwhelmed because we were having the move like a physical move from one location to the other as on top of trying to get the in-person events going again so now that we're fully settled in this year i'm hoping to like i said get the video content back up and running on a regular basis we've got the radio show we're going to be having the adventures coming out and lots of products so just stay tuned there's going to be a lot of stuff coming out probably all at once because i'm like kind of like doing a couple hours here on this, on that, on the other thing. And I'm kind of getting all my ducks in a row so we can just like hit the ground pretty, pretty um, boldly once we're ready to sort of put all this stuff out. Um, we've got free RPG day coming up um, on June 22nd, and we're going to have a lot of content creators here. Richard Ruin's going to be doing a panel with a bunch of um, local video creators in the TTRPG space, video content creators. So that's going to be really exciting. We're starting up a, um, a solo RPG book club. So hopefully that will get going virtually so we can really um, reach out to our global community as well, not just our local community with the in-person stuff. So I'm, I'm really excited to start getting our online events and our online experiences um, back out in the world. And so I don't really know um, kind of where they're going to live and, and where you're going to find them pop up, but we are, they are, they are being worked on 
and they will be rolling out very soon. So stay tuned. It's fascinating how much stuff you're doing and how you keep it all together. And just, I'm excited to see how it all plays out. But with that in mind, what would you say is one, um, one positive that's going on for the store right now and one difficulty? Because as most people know, whenever it comes to business, that there's always ups and downs that you have to deal sure. with. Yeah, I would say um, the positive is that our community is so strong and so great. And we really have, you know, just a really, a really great community that's so supportive and, um, and, you know, and really kind of help us, you know, cultivate the ideals that we have for this industry of being welcoming and inclusive and inviting and, and supporting people in their hobbies and in their creations and really allowing space for people to have a voice in what they make and what they create and have a way to um, show that off and sell it in on a retail floor. Like we just had a game designer come into the store today who is from California and saw her game, you know, on our shelf and was just like so excited. You know, it's a small little zine and it's mostly sold online. I don't even know if any other uh, retail businesses in the world even have it on a shelf. So she was so stoked to see it and it was really exciting. And so things like that are, are you know, what, what I really find, you know, the most exciting about kind of what we do and what we've created over, you know, over these years. Um, and I would say the difficult part about all of this is um, when, you know, we're, we're basically in a, uh, a trademark battle right now with somebody who is trying to, you know, um, use our name and our likeness um, without, our permis without our permission. And so, um, you know, so that's been kind of rough, you know, just this idea that like, you know, we've spent all this, you know, we, we've created the name 20 sided to mean something. And then somebody else walks in and just says, oh, that's a really great name. I'm just going to use it. And what can you do about it? You know, and, and that's really difficult for me personally, um, as you know, just thinking about this is like, you know, something I've been working towards to build up and to create um, a brand around. And then just to have somebody just say, hey, that's great. Well, you know, I'm going to use it, too. And it's like there's so many other ways that somebody could, you know, name their business off of a, a, a 20 sided die, right? Like we have critical role and role 20 and dimension 20 and like, you know, a million companies that came after us that decided to name their business after a die that you roll in a game, but they didn't feel the need to literally use 20 sided. Right. So, um, so things like that. I mean, it's, and it's exciting, you know, uh, to think like, okay, well, we've created something so special and so wonderful that other people want want to use it. <laughs> um, but at the same time, you know, it, you know, it's not us and it's, and it's not okay. <laughs> so anyway, right. it, it gives that like, um, not that it tarnishes the brand, but somebody can wind up using it for something else. And, you know, pretty much it, it can devalue what you're exactly. doing with your store and they could be winding up branding it for something completely different. That's unrelated to gaming. And, and I think like, you know, that would be fine. Like if somebody opened like a 20 sided, you know, grocery store, like that's fine. Right. Like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like there were, we're not in any kind of competition, but when somebody else opens up another business that is running interactive, immersive, you know, gaming experiences, that's rough. you know, using our name, you know, and then I've got a million people coming to me saying, Oh, like, that's so cool that you're, you know, doing this event or you're doing this thing and I have to explain to them that that's not us or, you know, somebody's really confused and upset because, you know, ticket sales or something went awry and they're, you know, they want a refund. And I'm like, well, that's not me or, you know, so many different things where it just kind of, it does, it, it, it hurts, you know, our ability to service, you know, our customer base and to, and it dilutes our brand, you know, it dilutes, it, 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 you know, it's, it's one thing if, you know, and everybody, you know, there's, who knows, like what happens if, you know, you know, something, you know, somebody else gets canceled using our name, they're going to take our business down with them, you know, or just the expectation. Somebody's like, oh, I want to go to this, you know, role-playing game experience. And, you know, the name 20 sided is, comes with an expectation of what you're going to get for your money. And then you come to that thing and your expectation is not met because, 
somebody else was advertising something similar under the same name that's not the same thing, you know, and that's really hard to deal with as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it's a tough spot to be in. Hopefully that all gets situated, you know, to, to your favor is uh, that's what I hope for you guys. Yeah. And so, I just really yeah, my whole hope on that is that, you know, the community who has helped build our name and who is part of creating what 20 side it is, um, you know, kind of says to this, you know, you know, to other people out there to be like, hey, you know what, like this name is in use and you should just come up with another name. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, it seems easy enough. <laughs> it seems easy enough. Like, you know, and, you know, and I get it. It's like the, there's brand recognition there and it's, you know, it's easy, but I mean, you it's, know, still it's, not, it's not right. It's not right. Yeah. Yeah. This episode of The Match Slip is sponsored by Crash CityCon, Roanoke, Virginia's premier gaming and fan convention. It's tabletop gaming at its best in addition to role playing games, board games, there are vendors, and so much more. Play with some of the top game masters in the area, enjoy a casual game in their open gaming area, or learn to play games you always wanted to play. Attend Crash City Con August 23rd through the 25th of 2024 at the Berglund Center Special Events Center. You could check out more information at CrashCityCon.com. So what are some of your future plans for the store and what's something you consider unique about your store that, you know, maybe another store doesn't have? Oh, I would say that um, that we probably have the largest collection of of um, indie stuff, and I would say that we also have um, over the years really pushed the boundaries on what a um, you know what 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 this gaming community is all about. And I think that there, I think one of the, you know, the takeaways of 20 sided is, um, you know, is really that we are, um, we're trailblazers, you know, we, we're, we're pushing this industry standard and norms to, um, to elevate uh, this industry and to elevate um, people's experiences with gaming in general. And I think we've worked really hard over the past 13 years to make a lot of changes in this industry. And we've had a really big part in a lot of those changes that uh, I feel really proud of. And I'm excited to see more of that happen and continue to do that as we, as we move forward. Very cool. And my final question for you is if you can give us a little virtual tour, like however best you could paint a picture of somebody walking into your store for the first time. Yeah. Well, do you want to just see it? I can just, we could just, I'm, I'm downstairs. Oh. I can just take us upstairs and we can. Oh, just, sure. If you want we to. Could just, we could just walk around the store. Um, but, um, but yeah, and I can, down here is not um, set up right now for how we typically run um, our events, but uh, this space down here, I'm building out uh, to be um, kind of our our experiential place. So we change the lighting quite a bit down here. Um, we do have uh, some bookshelves. I mean, the lighting's pretty harsh right now. I'm going to be getting an electrician down here, so we're going to skip down here for right now. Um, because this is still a work in progress. But if you do come for like a mini painting, we do have the music and the lighting that sort of uh, is very immersive uh, and very exciting there. Um, and then uh, if you um, want to see our space, um, so this is, uh, this is our new store, which is really exciting. We've got um, lots of dice because you can't be 20-sided um, without having all of the dice. And we have more dice, diehard dice, metal dice. We just got our own 20-sided mystery dice uh, packaged for us by 1985 Games. They did such a great job with the packaging. It's so exciting. Um, we have uh, some of the brochures that we talked about that I've been creating. So we've got um, the Mira brochure, which talks about the world itself and our little Clearwater Peak trail guide that uh, our very own Sarah did the art for. And um, our Arrow the Cat token, which is a collectible 
uh, business card. So if you have this somewhere, definitely um, let us know where you keep it in your house, on your refrigerator, post it on our social media. Morgan will tell you all about it. Or Morgan will forward it, sorry. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we've got... Um, so over here, we have a lot of our... Uh, I, I keep changing the section sections around, but I like to say this is kind of our sort of like card-based games, heavier games. We got a lot of our two-player stuff and new stuff kind of over here. Um, we have a lot of our story, or well, right now, um, kind of our cooperative, and then also uh, sort of nature-based games, and then story-based games, and we've got our tarot, and we've got a lot of our whole critical role section of stuff. We got a lot of our, and then all of our indie games that we have, a huge amount of um, uh, minis that we paint all the time, and then more indie RPGs, lots more indie RPGs. Here's um, Pumpkin Dungeon that I made that I was telling you about, and Salt and Lake, and then a whole bunch of our other local creators that are all from New York, which is super fun. And we'll show off some more over here. <laughs> There's lots to see here. We also do um, for more community stuff as well. I'm just going to give you guys the full tour. Um, we do a CSA. And so every Monday, and today is our pickup, um, we uh, do a farm share. So we've got really amazing um, vegetables and stuff and amazing strawberries. So, uh, so yeah, so if you are in New York and you want to join our CSA, <laughs> now they're all laughing at me, um, you, you definitely can. There's sign-ups still available. But, yeah, we do, we do a lot of stuff here at 20 Sided, you know, lots of community events, lots of cool stuff. Those are the Todd James posters behind me. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, – we have our, our cool hoodies over here. Um, I need to get some more swag. I have some ideas for some fanny packs and some mugs and some other cool things, but, but yeah, that's the grand tour of 20 sided. <laughs> I appreciate you taking us on the tour. I love how you laid everything out. Like you said, you, you made a lot of well positioned items throughout the store and there's still plenty of room to walk from even just what I could see. I know people who are listening to the audio may not be able to see this. That's yeah. why I keep saying, check out the YouTube video. You could see the the tour that Lauren just took us on. Yay. This is a first. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Great. So, so Lauren, I appreciate you coming on the show. It was, it was great having you on. Is there anywhere yeah. you would like to send people that are listening that would like to learn more about the store? Yeah. Go to our website at 20 sidedstorecom and all the links to everything are there. You can join our discord 20 sided. Um, our server is amazing. We've got so many great people in the community there chatting all the time. So please join our community, be part of the 20 sided experience. And um, hopefully we'll see you all in New York soon. I will not only give you the grand tour of the store, but if you come visit, I will give you the grand tour of the neighborhood in Williamsburg and all of my other favorite businesses to explore here in Brooklyn. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you again, Lauren, for coming on. It's been a fun time. Yeah, absolutely. And for everybody else listening, if you'd like to read my reviews of the stores I visit in person, you can check it out at thematchlip.com slash newsletter. And with that being said, we'll talk to you all in the next episode. Take care. Take care. Bye.